Hey everybody, I'm Johnny with Team Legit. I'm Josh. We're here at the 2014 LA Drone Expo here in Los Angeles, California. And uh, we haven't been here yet. This is our first year coming and this is actually the first year of the expo. So there's lots of cool stuff to find out in sight. Let's go explore. Come on. Uh, drone Expo. We have Tony here from UAVRC. This is our one-stop shop that we head out to when we're in Los Angeles to pick up any of our gear. We got our buddy Fez. We donated him for the day to work out for the uh, the Drone Expo. Tony, how's the turnout here? Uh, it's been really busy here all morning since opening at 10 o'clock. We sold a lot of the mini quadcopters to the parents here trying to get a gift to their kid for Christmas in a couple of weeks. Uh, so far, really good turnout. Uh, everything's been good. Fez has had a lot of success here, answering a lot of questions. This is and bad. yeah, we're, we're treating the customers right. So make sure to visit us at uavrc.com. So what kind of uh, things are people interested in here? Are they going with the typical DJI stuff or do they like the more uh, unique carbon fiber frames and things like that? Well, you know what? There, it's a little bit of everything really. Uh, a lot of people are interested in building their own frames. So we're suggesting the uh, CX Pro here which is uh, 119 for the frame and then you get to choose all your electronics it does it is designed for the dji zemus three axis gimbal Very so it's cool. a really good one i've shot a Very lot of cool. really cool videos with it um, another one that is uh, very popular is going to be the 230 the mini racer quad carbon fiber on that one we're running the cobra 2300 kv motors on a force out battery pack uh, that one seems to be really good for all the folks that are trying to get into FPV racing. It seems like everybody just wants to get into these little mini quads. So yes. what makes these things so popular? Why does everybody want these little mini quads? Well, considering the FAA and all the rules and everything that's happening, everybody's, you know, going into the smaller stuff because you're going to get less hassle. Okay. So for one, it's because a lot easier to go as high altitude, yeah. things like that. Okay. A lot easier to transport as well. That's true. And uh, I'm looking here. This has X hover sticker. Is this the new X hover 330 that we're seeing here? This is a 300 size series 300. frame by X hover. We are, you know, showing it to everyone right now. It's not on the market yet, but you will be able to buy it uh, in the next few weeks. That looks pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. It is a foldable frame as well. Yeah, I noticed that on the arms here. Well, oh, yeah. it looks like you guys got everybody covered here with all the high end stuff and the lower end stuff. Tony, it's always a pleasure to see you at Thank these you. shows. And uh, we appreciate you guys being here and uh, providing the so the sales and support to all the people coming out to the show. By the way, great shirt. Oh yeah, these, <laughs> these, are, these are ugly Christmas sweaters. The drone edition. Yeah. <laughs> looks funny. Do the drone dance. Oh, Oh, Fez is going to quickly show you guys, uh, if you guys haven't seen this yet, this is the drone dance. This is how you calibrate your compass and your GPS. Show us the drone dance, Fez. Drone dance, drone dance. You got to bob your head a little more, if I remember correctly. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. And there you go, guys. Grab your partner, do -si do grab a DJI, and do your drone dance. <laughs> Stan LeBaron from FLIR Imaging, and um, we're just checking out some of the new uh, technology they brought to the show today. Uh, they've got everything from professional grade quality all the way down to this little teeny micro guy here. So um, we're just gonna ask him a few questions about uh, uh, how do you think that um, this is becoming uh, cheaper in the hobby? Is the is price coming down? Is it going up? Um, is it coming more accessible? Uh, the price is definitely coming down. Uh, a large part of that is driven by volume and the applications that are being enabled by thermal imaging, which for FLIR range from things like automotive, night driving, 
rear build sensors that are used in the BMW, Audi, and other, other uh, automobiles for pedestrian detection. Um, firefighting is another big application where because thermal imaging cameras can be used to see through smoke, so firefighters can go into a smoke-filled building or burning building and rescue people. Well, Stan, we appreciate your time. Thank right, you for showing us your cameras. You bet. Thanks for the, thanks for the interview. Thank you very much. Hey, we're here at the DJI booth with Randy Braun. Randy I am the Braun. director of product experience at DJI. How can I help you guys? Well, first of all, I want to say is it's safe to say the Phantom 1 and the Phantom 2 are the most popular out-of-the-box drone solutions. The Phantom 2 Vision Plus would be the most popular out-of-the-box. Uh, the Phantom 1 started the revolution with its GPS-enabled uh, stabilization ability. And if, I don't know if you guys still have a Phantom 1 sitting around. They're wonderful to fly, but uh, we came out then a year later with the Phantom 2 Vision. Which, in which we attached our own camera, uh, and that's opened up a lot of new doors for photographers. The quality of the images is very good, and it's something totally different for people to be able to just hover 30 feet up, 50 feet up, 100 feet up, and see uh, uh, the world from a new angle. We just came out with the Inspire One. The Inspire One is um, also made for professional videography and photography. It's really a crossover between the uh, Phantom line and the Spreading Wings line. Uh, the camera and the gimbal are fantastic. Uh, the camera shoots 4K uh, in several different frame rates. It uh, also shoots, it has a 12 megapixel sensor in it. Very good for low light, a little bit bigger, larger pixels. Um, and it's got 18 minute flight time with this battery here, which recharges in generally less than an hour. We got a 4,500 milliamp. Okay. Yeah. It's quite a battery. It's an intelligent battery also. It feeds a lot of data back to the drone and to your application that you're looking at, your FPV uh, app. So what about the flight controller in this? Well, is it just wearing a NASA uh, one or is it something else? I will have to ask the, uh, the engineers. I believe it's all new. Okay. Um, I don't think it's one of our old flight controllers. So, right. What kind of flak have you guys seen with... Uh, FAA and not not so much FAA but with people like uh, ordinary people coming in and picking up one of these just right out of the box and getting themselves in sticky and hairy situations crashing into buildings in you know large populated areas or uh, flying in areas where they probably should use common sense and not fly what kind of flack have you guys been getting as the company uh, we're now really the leaders in the software that prevents that sort okay. of uh, malfunction or uh, I would say poor judgment. Okay. Uh, you cannot even start our motors within 1.2 miles of any airport. Okay. Uh, and the farther away you go, the, the higher you are able to fly. So, so you guys are essentially idiot proofing the drone. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing our best. Awesome. Right. And uh, with all the fail safe return home features, the smart battery now knows how far away you are and it calculates how much uh, battery juice is left, juice is left gotcha. to tell you, hey, you're too far away, we're running out of juice, you need to come home. Or, or it'll give you 10 seconds uh, before it starts flying home on its own. Okay, you gotcha. can override that. So there's a lot of safety built into it. Excellent. And so we're pretty proud to be uh, in, in the lead um, of safe flying. Uh, we encourage everybody, of course, to pay attention to the 400 feet uh, yeah, altitude limit. Keep it in direct line of sight. Don't fly over people, which everyone here would common love to sense. fly through here. It's just common sense. Yeah, just, it's common just sense. Use common sense. It's all about common sense. Very cool. Very cool. Very, well, thank you for your time. Hey, thank you very much. Thank it's you. a fun show. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Good. I appreciate it. All right. I'm here with the uh, guy who looks very official. He's got a DJI shirt on. Tell us your name and what do you do? My name is Romeo Dorscher and I am the director of education for DJI. All right. Well, we've got, uh, we see you flying the new DJI Inspire. We have some very serious questions to ask you. Go for it. Is that a drone? <laughs> That's, that is a good question, you know. Uh, I don't call it a drone, but the media likes to do. Okay. I call this really a, an unmanned aerial vehicle or system. Okay, next question. Did you build it? I wish I had this talent because uh, this is a beautiful machine, but this is really the creation of a lot of very smart engineers and uh, people with uh, vision. And last question, how high does it go? <laughs> it should not go any higher than 400 feet in a safe environment. And where can I buy one of these? The best way right now is to go on to DJI.com and uh, do a pre-order. These will be shipping soon. Uh, the team is still making some last-minute uh, enhancements that came out of uh, feedback that we provided. 
so uh, it's a beautiful machine. And, and this is the very, very last question. Can I fly it? <laughs> Battery is empty. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we just wanted to ask those because when we're out flying our UAVs or UAS or unmanned aerial vehicles, if we're at a local park, those are the questions that everybody asks us when we come up. Did exactly. you build it? How much is it? Where can I buy it? How high does it go? It's What's so the true. range on this thing? And can I fly it finally? That is, that is so true. And uh, after the second question, I figured <laughs> that's where you were going. But these are these are the questions that the public, you know, they want to know. Yeah. And so good job on, on coming up with that. <laughs> well, I didn't come up with them. I let everybody, every eight or nine, eight to nine year old that comes up to me at the park when I'm flying ask those questions. Now, one question you will get with the Inspires is, is this one. So watch what's going to happen once I take off and I start the transformation process. Okay. Why is it doing this? Why are you transforming? <laughs> These is are this Star questions. Trek Enterprise? So that's, that's, what, that's what you're getting flying this one. But it's actually a really, really beautiful function. And uh, it, it increases not only the stability of the machine, but now if you have a second person, the camera control is uh, 360 degree unobstructed. That's so very, very cool. If I go back down to uh, landing mode, it just doesn't look as cool anymore. No, it doesn't look as, uh, what did you call it? What? what? You ever played the video game Portal 2? I know a lot of people have seen it. Oh. It looks like GLaDOS from Portal <laughs> 2. Oh, that is, that's actually, I, I didn't think of that, but you're right. <laughs> you're right. Uh, good, good job. So, um, it looks like the little red light is flashing on the back. Is that self-destruct mode? Yes, it, we have three more seconds. Okay. <laughs> now, so I, I've reached my 24% uh, percent battery mark, and it's letting me know that, hey, uh, Romeo, it's time for you to uh, bring it back down. Um, if I wait a little bit longer, I said it so at 20%, it will uh, automatically start to descend on its own. Very, very cool. So I, I don't want to do that, so I'm just hovering right now at a safe um, you know, altitude. Uh, right now it's using the optical flow to kind of position itself. So right. on the bottom we have a, a, a camera as well as like a sonar. That, that helps the flight controller with uh, determining the position, altitude, and uh, it helps the user uh, control it when you have no GPS. One of the coolest things that I, I like about the Inspire, and I'm being very blunt, is the higher price tag is bad for me if I wanted to buy it personally, but I think it helps detour those people that go pay $500 and pick up a Phantom and they end up smashing into the side of a building or flying over crowded areas. I think the higher price tag would make somebody think twice before buying this product and going out and flying it and putting themselves and other people in jeopardy. What do you think about that? Well, definitely, that, that, that wasn't the intention though, but what, what, what our intention is, and that's where I will come into play, is uh, education is key. Correct. It's not only educating the end user who's gonna fly this but the public Correct. as well as industry and ultimately also government right um, it, it's a, it's an effort that that is very important and uh, we will be putting a lot of focus into that next year very cool very cool well Romeo it was yeah, a pleasure you. to meet with you and thank you for answering our uh, really serious questions and uh, we appreciate DJI being out there being the forefront of innovation um, and we hope, like you said, the public is educated and not scared of these things, but uh, more aware of what their capabilities are. And um, again, not afraid of them, but more embrace it of exactly. the products. And, and you know, if you go back in history, I mean, the, the automobile, people were afraid of it. Uh, the, the airplane, people were afraid of it. Internet, you know, every time there is a big new development, there is some concern and it, it takes team effort. It takes, you know, you guys, it takes us, it takes responsible pilots Correct. and we'll make it work together. Again, thank you so much. Thanks guys. Hi, my name is Adam with Control Me. I'm Simon, I'm the CEO and founder of Control Me Robotics and we're located in Venice Beach, California. Okay, so what do you guys typically do with your stuff? It seems like you guys are doing some really innovative and just different stuff with uh, multi-rotors. So what are you guys all about? Absolutely, we, uh, we make a lot of custom drones for the film industry, and uh, we also try to do a lot of innovation for the future of drones. Uh, we work on hardware and software, and uh, right now we're focusing on like encryption and making cool things like these, uh, robotic arms and um, orbs that are sound sensitive. So the light in these uh, hula hoops here uh, spins, and it actually goes with the music whenever you're playing that. Gotcha, that's cool. 
Awesome. So, so what other so what other new things are you guys coming up with? You said you guys are developing some things. Tell me about yeah. what what are you guys most proud of with your company? So some of the most like uh, important innovative things that we're working on right now is Swarm technology. Okay. So you will see that within the next six months. We'll what is it? Warm tech. Swarm. Swarm tech. So that means okay. like we will have like multiple, multiple drones, drones. Uh, operating autonomously together at the same time, and we will use them to for shows and uh, some really cool like uh, innovative ways that you can use drones for more than uh, like an aerial platform it actually becomes like characters okay. that can be watched like for you, play yeah. or yeah. different things like that gotcha. for outdoor like spectacles so you guys are writing the software for the drones to communicate with each other are you guys writing the software are you guys creating the hardware what do you guys do we, we do it all so we write the software and we also create the hardware okay. and then we integrate it into an easy system very cool All right, guys, we're here with Ruben. This is our competition, but he's also our good friend. Ain't no competition. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, Ruben builds some of the greatest uh, foam wings that we've seen out there as well. He's got the Juggernaut, and that's the flinch. 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 The Runt, the runt. Behemoth, and the Dreadnought. That thing is just huge. Uh, I'm thinking about getting one of those and mounting a car seat to that. Since I'm expecting a baby here soon, I think that can carry, what, 9, 10 oh, pounds? congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So Ruben, tell us a little bit about your company and tell us about uh, the success of Sweet Wings. Uh, let's see. Um, I started about two years ago. I uh, was buying everyone else's wings. I was like, man, they're not cutting it. Um, they're too thin, tip stall. It's like, hey, what will it take to, to make my own? So I started tracking down the EPP, which is a pain. And it's hard to find. Oh my God. And it's not cheap. It's not. It's not it's cheap. Not. So found that, started uh, uh, making my own stuff and you know, it started taking off. My buddy started buying them. And uh, I was like, they're like, dude, you're, you need to do something with this. And so here I am. <laughs> I don't so, even know how I'm here. <laughs> so I, I want to say the most um, popular product line is the Juggernaut. The juggernaut, yeah. Juggernaut. So tell us a little about the Juggernaut. Uh, it's basically, it's a... Uh, the wingspan and the... the juggernaut. No, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's a beast of a wing. The payload uh, ranges from uh, 4,000. Can you see me? Is yeah, we got our my bodyguard right okay. here blocking the shot. The um, payload from 4,000 to 6,600, um, you know, three cell. It'll take four cell. You got it on five cell. You can put whatever you want in it. Um, it'll do over 100 miles an hour Very if cool. you want safely. But yeah, it's it's a pretty indestructible wing. What about range? Range is pretty much uh, that. That's all depend on the builder. Yeah. This is just for close range, 17 minutes flights. You can set it up to go even further. Um, RC groups, the guys have been, you know, achieving long distances. So you know, it's really up to the builder. Um, different combinations. This is totally up to uh, whoever wants to create it. So I noticed that uh, you always run a little bit higher KV motors than we do. We like to run the lower KVs and uh, get those long, long-lasting flights. Tell me why you run the higher KVs. Uh, I just like that instantaneous uh, KV, you know, that that throttle response. I just uh, it's that punch. That punch. Um, I don't like the slower KV with the bigger prop. I, I, I just don't like it. Eight inch is, is what I usually like to run. Anything bigger, it's a ten inch or you know or above. Very cool. But yeah, it's very cool. I just like that punch. You typically run everything on three cells or four cells. I like three cell, but for the bigger ones, you need four cells, sometimes five cell to get the good efficiency out of it. Yeah, like this one over here flew on a five cell. The video's on my YouTube channel, but it basically had vertical like nobody's business. Wow. Yeah, that's a huge airflow. I haven't even flight time. I haven't even did the flight time with that. Uh, oh, this really? one here, I got about 57 minutes set up for mapping. Uh, pictures are back here. You can copy them. Um, but uh, yeah, flight times 57 minutes set up for mapping, throttle management. Uh, 16,000 milliamps is what we tested on my YouTube channel. Uh, 32,000 milliamps on the Dreadnought four cell. Um, you can pretty much load it up however you want. Very cool. Very cool. Well, we like your products and we like. People like you in this industry, we like having you guys out you there. You like me? We, we do, <laughs> we do. We have a very, very uh, high respect for you. And uh, I mean, oh, people thanks. like you, you have the same mindset as us. You couldn't find something that fits you, yeah. so you went out and you created your own. Yeah. We, we like that inspiration of that. I got a question. When's the uh, legit wing uh, sweep wing shootout? Oh, <laughs> oh well, I, I've been I haven't been uh, responding to that because I don't want to like uh, make you guys feel bad. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, well, with our product line, uh, the reason that we created the, the smaller wing is we live in Los Angeles. Are we still rolling? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. You went down. All right. We're gonna we're gonna just roll from yeah. there. Yeah. So uh, with that, the, the, we created the smaller legit wing, the smaller airfoil, because we live in Los Angeles. Yeah. I know you guys are up in Northern California. You have loads oh, and loads yeah. of room. But with us, for us to get somewhere, it takes about an hour, hour and a half drive just to get somewhere to fly. Yeah. And uh, loading up the car with a bunch of big, huge airframes, which is which is a great thing, doesn't work for us. So what we like to do is um, we have the smaller ones. So we can fit a bunch of them in a little compact car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we all pack in my little Honda Civic. And we yeah. drive out about an hour or two <laughs> yeah. hours to get those flights. So that's why that was born. Well, you know, you know, the, the thing is, is, is having them that small, you know, is, is nice. And but the bigger ones, a lot of guys, you know, they stuff like I get approached. They want to do the long range, right? And I'm like, hey man, these bad boys will do it, but can you fit it in your car? Exactly. exactly. Can exactly. you do that? Unless you're driving a truck or a van or yeah. something. Josh, hold that one up. That's the uh, behemoth. Hold that one up. Uh, Josh is six and a half feet tall. Look at this. So thing. Yeah. you definitely need a pickup truck to get yeah. that in your yeah. car. So that's where we like the smaller ones. But if you yeah, live yeah. out in the country it, or yeah, you live out north, you know, these are awesome yeah, to have. Huge. <laughs> you guys got anything else for Mr. Rubin? Should we yeah. uh, grab any more of his ideas? I'll I think, it, I, I'm, I'm, I think just, as soon as, I'm just wondering where my sweatshirt at, dude. Yeah. You, oh, you, know, sweatshirt? you gotta get with Patrick. What Patrick at CSFPV, he <laughs> created these. Uh, Team Legit is a huge sponsor of uh, Patrick and vice versa. He always hooks us up. So we like Those to rock nice. the latest the nice. latest of the, uh, the gear. <laughs> All right, Ruben, it was a pleasure All to right, finally man. put you a name to a that good face. One? This dude's a monster. He is. <laughs> you guys have a good one. All right. All right, man. Okay, we're here with Wesley from Aerial Media Pros, and he's going to talk a little bit about uh, the show and what uh, they're offering with us today. So aerialmediapros.com is a online web store that offers, and, and in-store, that offers sales, service, and support for drones, usually for cinematic use and videography, but we also have packages with our Phantom and DJI products that will allow you to be used in industries like uh, real estate and commercial industries, so like that. We see you guys have a lot of impact on the hobby. We see you at every single trade show that we've been to, uh, RCEX, so we've yeah. seen you guys at uh, AMA show, yeah. and uh, I think this is the first time where I've actually seen you guys sponsor the entire event. Uh, tell us about um, what you think about the turnout and how much you think that, how much people have been informed while they've been here at the show. Right. I think from anyone from just had just heard about drones last week to um, a full videography team they're all here now and we've been really impressed with the turnout and really happy that we had the opportunity to sponsor with uavsa and uh, it's just been a really good opp opportunity to get our name out there and get people to learn about our copters and how they can benefit other industries um, in the business world and uh, which market do you guys think that Aerial Media Pro is mostly targeted to? Is it like the beginners or is it more of like the high-end, uh, full-scale video movie production companies? We started in the full-scale movie production companies and we found a lot of success because you, what you can do with the Phantom series now in other industries like agriculture or real estate, stuff like that, is the same thing that you'd have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to do before. And so we're moving into more of a consumer product because that the technology involved in that product you can do great things with so and uh, one last question what type of impact have you guys seen from say the regulations and the FAA you know jumping in and uh, putting stops to a lot of this filmmaking and things like that with use of drones and whatnot what type of impact have you guys seen and do you guys have anything on the horizon to help combat that or maybe help the movie industry and people like that get into doing the aerial footage with the with the drones right so some some of the laws that we actually really support um, lawmaking for it and think that there, it needs to be regulated in some sort of fashion so that we can keep people uh, safely in the air with other aircraft, airplanes, helicopters. It's the same airspace. And so we actually really support it and think that um, whether it's moved into more of a private pilot's license or something like that, or you need to have a specific registration for your copter or something like that, we think it's a good idea. Um, we'll see moving forward whether we're able to actually work with the government and see if we can get people using the products well. Right now we don't have a plan in place, but for sure we'll be reacting and responding adequately. So uh, what are the plans for next year's show? 
Um, I think we'll probably end up doing similar because of the turnout. It's been really good, and I think that this will continue to be a show, hopefully a show where the big companies release items. Um, we haven't seen much of that today, but I expect if this becomes more of a popular thing, that's going to be this is going to be the place to do it. So. Well, it seems like this is the first year for the Drone Expo here in L.A. I really hope this becomes an annual event, and uh, we definitely love to see you guys again. Thank you so much for uh, supporting this uh, show and bringing out a lot of the equipment to let the general public and everybody see. So uh, we'll see you guys next year, hopefully. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.